Hello everybody, welcome to your fourth and hopefully last part of the tutorial. Uh, so, um, we in the last tutorial we created the get and set uh, properties for position and for current frame. And we're going to need these two in the player class when we're actually doing stuff with the player class. So, let us work with the player class right now. So, if we go to initialize, then we actually have to initialize certain things like the player's position. So, we're going to set the default position to 10 for the X and Y coordinates. And if you don't know what that means, it's saying X and Y are both equal to 10. And we're going to set the move speed. Uh, let's set that to 200. And let's see the current frame X and current frame Y are going to be both equal to zero by default and the player image that's going to be in load content so I'm going to put if player image dot load from file and it's called player dot png then we're actually going to run our code for the animate to actually load the content or actually uh let's see okay first of all let us go to player.h and we're going to include animation.h so that's what we're going to need and we're going to create one instance of animation cuz we're only controlling one player so in this instance we're gonna we can make a public or protected or whatever so we're gonna put animation and we're gonna name it player animation so <laughs> the player animation if we look at it right here um sorry in the player animation right here we set that we will put SF image uh, and we will set it over here. The problem with this is that we're going to be running the load content after the initialize. So if we load the player content after initializing, then in the animation class, temp image will be equal to null and therefore our sprite will be equal to null. So to avoid that, we're going to do, we're going to do SF sprite and we're gonna put set I'm gonna say set image and in, in here we're gonna store an image and yeah so one thing that I've never said to you guys is for our set functions we can set these to void and I'm gonna set this to void too because we're not getting anything we're just setting it for our sets, we could set that to void because we're not returning a value. But for our get um, functions, we're actually returning a value. So we need to make this uh, type integer, double, or whatever type we're trying to return. So for set image, we put set image and we're going to get a SF image. And we're going to name this temp image. Okay? And don't forget the semicolon at the end. Or semicolon for you American viewers. So. We're gonna do void animation set image. And we have to do SF image temp image. And we're gonna say that sprite is that the name of it? Yeah, sprite image dot set image dot temp image and therefore that's how we're going to include it so right here we can take this away we can remove that and we'll remove this from our code right here and to make this a bit cleaner we'll move the sorry we'll move the active up there should make it a bit cleaner so one thing that we changed we changed it from from our sets from boolean to void so we have to remember to change it so lots of people might see that as a pain because we have to both change it in dot h and dot cpp but this is just something that you have to get used to so 
even for void active and then animation dot h for our set active we have to change that to void as well just for proper coding syntax whatever you want to call it so now that we got that covered we say that if player dot image load from file or whatever then we have to take our player animation sorry player animation dot and we're gonna put set image and we're gonna store the player image in there okay so if we go to animation our set image is in public make sure it's a public not in protected or anything because we're trying to use this in other classes and we're not inheriting from that class therefore we have to make it public if we want other classes to use it so we have our player animation so we have it in low content right here we want to do player animation dot initialize and the initializing takes uh, a few arguments so let's look at what these arguments take it takes the the y position of the player x and y position the amount of frames in the y coordinate the amount of frames in the x in the x coordinate and the y coordinate sorry so what we're gonna do is put pass an x and y and we're gonna put four by four because there's four frames going across four frames going up and down okay so that's it for our initialize and our low content so for the update now we have to actually update our control so our player can actually move so we're gonna do this by doing window dot get uh, get input is key down keys no sorry I'm thinking of of X and A SF key let's start with right so what we're gonna have to do is that we're gonna before we even do anything with our update we have to first set our player animation our active equals to true so we're gonna say set active and we're gonna put true in there and I'm going to tell you why we're doing this right now and what we're going to do is that we're going to store our x and y values the reason why we made the get and set properties for animation is because we need to store the x and y positions and get them from the animation the current animation because when we're drawing the animation we're drawing the animation based on the position so we have to get the animations position update it in the player class and then send it back to animation for it to update it again if that makes any sense to you so uh... well we could we, we don't really have to go through all that right now but we can really what we what we really need to do right now is that we need to store our current frame dot x and take that from player animation dot current frame that get current frame and the axis is one since we're trying to get the x-axis so right now that if the player presses the right arrow key then we're gonna do x plus plus equals move speed times window dot get frame time and what this is gonna do is that it's gonna make our speed move at a moderate pace and we're gonna look more into this in the next tutorial. Um, even though I talked about classes and um, clocks in the last tutorial, in the next tutorial we're gonna be uh, learning a little bit more about that. So we're gonna say else if window dot get input dot is key down. Sorry, I can't really type today. SF key left. Uh, then we're gonna set x minus equals move speed times window dot get frame time now some of you are like SFML has a built-in function to actually make things move you could use that if you want but I'm gonna do it this way so window dot get input is key down SF key up 
and we're gonna say y minus equals move speed times window dot get frame time and I noticed that I spelt window wrong over there and lastly we're gonna put window dot get input dot is key down and we're gonna set that to SF key down and we're gonna put y plus equals move speed times window dot get frame time so uh, and we need to put an actual else statement and at the in this else statement we're gonna say player animation dot set active equals to false and the reason why we're gonna do this is because if we're not pressing any buttons then we wanna set that the player active is false and therefore the player won't animate anymore it sets it true by default assuming that you're pressing a button checks to see if you're pressing a button if you're not pressing a button then it resets it to false again so I said I was going to explain the windows that get frame time in the next tutorial, but might as well just explain it right now. This is going to be split up into five parts, sorry. But yeah, might as well explain it. So, the window that get frame time from last tutorial figures out how much time passed from the last frame. So, um, say on, when I was doing this on X and A, my frame time from the last update was approximately 0 0.166667 okay so if I was to get out the calculator so the move speed is equal to 200 so if I say 200 times 0 0.166667 then the player moves at approximately 33.3 spaces every single update and if you set your x and y to an integer value then it will round it up or down depending on the value so we either so in this case it would move 33 spaces to whichever direction you're moving and the reason why we do it like this is so that it will run the same speed on every computers on every grade of computers well how does it know to run the same speed on every grade of computers so say the say one computer updates every second okay and another computer updates every two seconds that's the slower computer updates every two seconds the faster computer updates every second okay so I hope yours updates faster than a second cuz if that if it updates every second then that's slow but anyways so for the first computer it will say move speed 200 times 1 which is 200 so for every second the player will move 200 pixels in the direction you specify now say the uh, com the second computer it would do 200 that's a move speed times 2 because that's the amount of time that passed since the last frame so every 2 seconds so every single every 2 seconds it will move 400 spaces so in the end the sprite will be in the same place as it would be on every any single computer therefore making the sprite move at the same speed on every single grade of computers so I hope that made sense to you that's it for this tutorial and the next tutorial should be the last so thanks for watching hope you enjoyed this and bye